Retired General Tom Lawson is the former Chief of Defense Staff for the military. He's with us live to unpack some of that. Hi, General Lawson. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much for making the time. Uh, we're going to speak to the IDF in, in a few moments to get the latest from them. But, but let me start before I get into the possibility of a ground offensive, just on your take on what unfolded in the last 24 hours involving that hospital. Yeah, I mean, anybody um, who sees uh, what happened there um, will, will be saddened and outraged. Uh, but it really does matter who created the event. And, um, you know, there was no upside for Hamas to wait of course, uh, to find that out, uh, rage across the Arab world will be on behalf of all of those who have been hurt there, and it will be aimed at Israel. But for Israelis and for anyone else around the world who uh, supports uh, Israel as a democracy, it's very important to find out whether or not Israel was responsible for this. And all indications are uh, that they were not, and this matters. Do you, I mean, the fact that the U.S., the president himself, plus their national security apparatus came out saying what they did, what, what I just read off, what do you take from that? I, I believe uh, that they would be very, very careful not to land with their assessment unless they were in, uh, you know, well convinced uh, that the intelligence shows uh, that this is as, as a result of the uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad group associated with Hamas. So I believe uh, that the, in all probability, that's exactly what happened. We saw, uh, despite what ended up being revealed today, the initial reporting led to a lot of protests, and, and we showed some of the visuals throughout the region. I'm wondering, from a strategic military perspective, if those kinds of protests and the degree to which the rest of the region is already responding would impact the decision to move in uh, on whether or not to move in on the ground? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, Israel's well aware that most of the Arab world uh, will be very sympathetic to the Gazan cause at this point uh, and uh, will have already overcome their horror uh, to what took place uh, a week and a half ago with Hamas uh, and, and all the ter terrible terror attacks across the border. Uh, so Israel, um, while I, like many Canadians, would have hoped that there might be another alternative out there, perhaps driven by a coalition of Arab countries, uh, to diffuse the situation, um, my sources in Israel are telling me that uh, nothing short of the destruction of Hamas uh, will be accepted by the Israeli population. So I don't think this changes that, uh, that uh, calculus at all. It's not a question of if... Uh, there will be an evasion of Gaza, but when? What kinds of factors go into making the decision about when? Because we've been interviewing, and, and like I said, I'll talk to the IDF in a few moments, we've been interviewing them over the last week, and they have consistently said that a ground invasion is imminent. We know that the troops began amassing at the border uh, very soon after the initial attack, within th three to four days, really. What, what factors, um, from your experience, would go into making the determination about when to go in? Right. Well, the Israeli Defense Forces uh, have many regulars, but are really based a lot uh, on reserve forces, who many of whom uh, wouldn't have been uh, directly involved in serious training, uh, perhaps for months. So uh, certainly it was going to be a week, if possible, a couple of weeks, maybe several weeks uh, until uh, the invasion, until those forces would have been truly ready uh, to undertake a, a very complicated invasion. But in the meantime, uh, the Israeli Air Force is not exacting any revenge. Every bomb that's being targeted uh, into Gaza is being targeted based on intelligence, and usually that will be based on uh, where tunnels uh, exit or enter from buildings. So everybody who's down in the tunnels, all the Hamas material and weaponry that's down in those tunnels, that's protected. There isn't a weapon from the air that can threaten that. Uh, however, you have to come up out of those tunnels uh, and Israel, bit by bit, through all of their ability to uh, gather intelligence, including reconnaissance and on-ground intelligence, have, have one by one been picking off those entrances and exits with the idea that when the invasion occurs, they will have lowered the probability of Hamas warriors and fighters coming up behind them when this invasion is underway. How complicated does the tunnel system in Gaza make it for the IDF, and, and how long do you expect a ground operation as a result of that could last? 
Yeah, that's what it's all about. So this is guerrilla warfare, but guerrilla warfare where the guerrillas have had decades uh, to set up underground bunkers. And we're talking, I, I think it's hard for the average Canadian to believe uh, the labyrinth that runs underneath the Gaza Strip. Um, for many, many years, decades, uh, young Gazans have been exiting out the south border through Egypt and uh, heading off to Iran to study engineering to study subterranean engineering and, uh, and weaponry and rockets uh, so that they can come back in through the same uh, exits and entry points at the south of, uh, of the Gaza Strip uh, and bring all that expertise to bear. So these guerrillas are much different from those uh, that, uh, that fought, for instance, uh, in Iraq against the Americans. These ones have had 20 years to prepare uh, the, uh, the underground uh, infrastructure that now will be uh, at the center, at the core of all of the, the Israeli warfare. So one final question for you, General Lawson. Many times when we do interview the Israeli army, you know, they're, they're and representatives of the government, their objective is very specific to completely get rid of all of Hamas's military capabilities. How significant, how wide in scope is that endeavor? Well, it won't be simple. It, it's going to be, uh, what I'm hearing is at least six to eight months, and it will involve many dead on the Israeli side, uh, many more on the Gaza side. But I think that speaks to why President Biden is there. You know, he's there kind of for three reasons. One, to show he cares, to show the United States care about Israel, and they'll be a, a strong ally through this. And number two, he's there, and for the same reason that he's having the Gerald Ford and the Dwight D. Eisenhower carrier sent in, and that is that Iran and Hezbollah better not open a second front, and if they do, uh, the United States will be there to help Israel with that second front. But third, and I think to your point, he wants to know what kind of strategy is going to follow this invasion. What are they going to have in mind for the government and security of Gazans after this war is over, and, and who is then going to be looking after the rebuilding of, uh, of the Gaza Strip? And, and I think you wanted to make sure of that. So this is going to be a long war, followed by a long recovery, much as we saw after the second intifada in the West Bank. Okay, General Lawson, appreciate your analysis as always tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Vashi.